Ryan, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. I shall answer your question. I saw on the news today what last night's winning lottery numbers were, and I was thinking, would it be a good idea if maybe I, I don't know, just I have the Eye of Agamotto lying around. I was thinking of using it, going back, and just, you know, playing those numbers. What is the worst that could happen, in all honesty? <laughs> Uh, well, you could upset the entire timeline and thus the universe. Oh, is that all? Okay. So I should do it is what you're saying. <laughs> yep. Because apparently there is a, you know, an absolute, you cannot stop an absolute moment. And that is today's what if. What if, and that, that is what we're talking about here on Infinity Rewatch. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Andrew Fantasia. I'm Ryan J. Whitehead. And we're asking, what if Dr. Stephen Strange picked up his girlfriend before he went to the party? <laughs> <laughs> you know, who knew it was that terrible? You know, you should just stay stay home. That's all I'm telling you to do. Just stay home. Don't do anything. Oh, boy. Um, I, I think I need to start this podcast with a certain question. Um, a serious question, not the question that I just asked you, uh, because if I don't, it's going to be nagging at me for the whole episode. They were you paying attention during the opening credits at the cast? I think so. Did you see a, a particular name of an actor? Uh, and then again, in the closing credits, they, they brought the person's name again, along with the character they're known for playing in the MCU. And they didn't, show up in the episode as far as I can tell and I feel like I've been trolled because of who it is and I was like okay if Ryan saw the name he would bring it up on the show but he didn't I didn't see the name I didn't see it I don't know what you're talking about it's Christine Everhart no no, she was not in it. She no was in, way. She was in the opening credits. And like I saw Leslie Bibb. And I'm like, oh, wow. And I'm waiting. And I'm waiting. And the whole time I'm there on Millhouse, I'm like, when are they going to get to the fireworks factory? Where is Christine? And then the episode ends. Nothing. The credits come. I see again, Leslie Bibb, Christine Everhart. I'm like, okay, I what happened? I know where she was. Where was I she? I know exactly. She was in the news segment where they talked about the explosion and that the, the person who died was uh, was Dr. Palmer. She was the news anchor. Oh. Okay. Ah! Because I know where you're trying to go and it ain't going to happen, you <laughs> see? They brought, her, they brought her back, but it's not who you think. Well, it's not happening in this universe, right? In this universe, she didn't become a nihilist. Uh, but as we all know, in the regular MCU, she undisputedly is. <laughs> I, I I think like in this this universe and in that one, she is the same. She's the damn anchor, I tell you. But uh, this one, this I'm actually surprised that this one, this we're in the fourth episode and it's Doctor Strange. I actually thought we'd probably see him near the end of the entire run um, because I just feel like with the multiverse of madness. Um, which, which I feel like that's the purpose of this entire show. This show, I think this show is getting you ready for multiverse madness. I think so too. And I think it goes back to what you said last week, um, where you said, you know, there's a very real chance we might pick some of these stories up again. Um, mm -hmm. and I still think that you are onto something here. Like this strange at the end of this episode could very well survive what's happened to him and you know bamf into another universe and then nightcrawler will call him and be like you stole my sound effect i sue you uh but but he would you know he would come somewhere else and continue another through line he might mm -hmm. become for lack of a better uh um, comparison here he might become almost like a nick fury of the multiverse and just we might see him pop up in every one of these future episodes being like look there's more We've got to we've got to change whatever my, my clearly my Benedict Cumberbatch is flawless. It's like he's right here with us. Uh, the, yeah, I, I think that that could still be the case. So I think it, that them introducing him this early means they've got more. They, like they left enough room 
to play with him. Uh, how many did you say there was going to be of these? Ten? I think there's ten, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there's there's more room for him to, to pop up again. I think he will. I think so. Um, I, you know, I feel like because the multi, because like we still need to fulfill the story arc of Doctor Strange. And, you know, it's funny, even though we did the rewatch of Doctor Strange, um, I'm still trying to figure out his arc. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, in Doctor Strange, his arc was like he thought he needed his hands in order to, you know, be like, yeah, just be the doctor. And then as he learned about helping people and, and Carmitage and the whole thing, he kind of, he kind of was like challenging the rules of magic and like the way magic works. And, you know, he's just like, he's like being, cause like he was the best doctor. He was the best doctor in his, in his medicine and his practice, sorry. And then now he's being the, best doctor in his practice which is magic and it's kind of i like the way what if this what if episode played it's kind of like in the multiverse of madness if he's going to repair everything he needs to repair himself and so facing that alternate version who has the who is at the point of collapsing the universe as we know it that's kind of i think that's maybe where it goes but it's kind of too obvious you know what i mean like i don't know i don't know it's it's just seems like it's too handed out to you at this point. Maybe uh, that it, it's a it's a cool idea, and it, the idea of even just seeing, even if it's just as a cameo, seeing this evil strange show up in live action, just because he had that cool alternate outfit, uh, that it just looked like something you know that they would have an Ultimate Alliance when they're like, hey, you want to play as Dark Strange? And like, yes, please. Uh, <laughs> so, Seeing that on on the big screen, I think would be really neat. Yeah, no, for sure. I, and and to me though, even uh, that I'm really surprised that we're at this point in in what if. I still think that um, uh, I still think there's still obviously there's still a long way to go, but I do have a feeling that we're gonna we're gonna see more of this in Doctor Strange's story. I, I have no hesitation on that. I think so too. Uh, now I'm trying to remember the Doctor Strange movie. Uh, is there a moment there where like he calls Christine or she calls him and he's like, do you want me to pick you up? And, and she says something like, no, I'll, I'll, I'll take a cab or something. Is that something that happens? That no. Like so what, what happens is, is that, so in the beginning of the movie, he does like the miracle save, like he helps the, helps her patient. And he goes, I have a thing, you know, you do you want to come? And she's like, oh, you know how much I love just listening to you talk about this thing. But she's being sarcastic and their relationship was on the fritz at the time. So so she never ended up going with him. Ah, that's it then. That's the one. Yeah. OK, wow. So lucky for her, lucky for her. He's a bad boyfriend in the normal yes. cinematic universe. Um, And let me just say, I mean, uh, Rachel McAdams is and always will be a beautiful lady. She's one of the most lovely women on planet Earth. Somehow they managed to make her cartoon just as pretty as her. Uh, And it's just a bunch of lines and drawings. But I'm sitting there and I was like, I feel funny. This cartoon is making me feel things. Uh, Animated Christine Palmer. Call me. Yeah, she's she is she is absolutely gorgeous, and I would say in this episode, most of the cast are uh, spot on uh, to who they are supposed to be. So that was really cool to see as well. Visually, this one was stunning because you know nothing beats a sorcerer battle, Ooh. period. And on a Disney animated level, just oh my god, just jack up those effects, you know, and just the whole. I mean, we saw the the shielding powers of the Vishanti. We saw flames of the Faltine. We saw a lot of creatures, and I'm sure there are references to Doctor Strange comics. 100%. I'm sure they are. I have, just have no idea who they are, except for the one which we saw in a past episode, which is potentially Shuma Gorov. Yeah, that got me really excited, because I was not expecting that kind of, um, I guess, continuity is the right word in an anthology where literally every episode is a different universe. Like I I was just ready for just a complete continuity free fun grab bag. And I was down for that. So to see what's presumably 
Shumagorov again. That got me really excited. I'm like, oh, cool. Like they're, they're, uh, I don't know if there are infinite Shumagoroths as there are infinite Stephen Stranges and, and the like. But that was just a neat little way, again, of tying it in, which Marvel is so good at at this point. The masters yeah. of it. Master, oh, for sure, masters of it. Uh, there was a ca- that character, too, that's protecting the, the library. Um, I have to check if that character is a Marvel Comics character. I feel like they are. Um, I'm hoping the show will introduce a brand new character that we will see in some way, shape, or form. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it's, um, I think it's, I think her name's America Chavez. Yes. Um, because her power is she can punch uh, a hole into a new reality. That's her power. Uh, so, but I think it would be a great way to debut the character and then see the character in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, what a cool way to debut somebody. And I hope we see this librarian guy too, because that library was a a really cool location. And I feel like I've heard that name, the Library of Cagliostro. I feel like I've heard that outside of Marvel. Is that that like a real sort of historical figure who may or may not be real, Cagliostro? Like, like Like a King Arthur kind of person? I'm sure he's a Marvel reference because here's the thing. I think there's a lot, like, (laughs) I think there's a lot of references here, but Dr. Strange had a long history in comics. So to be like, yeah, that's for sure. I don't know, man. I have, you have to go to some bigger comic book historians other than myself because there was a lot of references in this one that, that potentially are a thing. And it's hard to say, hard to say like the garden gnome. Who knows? (laughs) I felt so bad for that garden though. Uh, and the the little the little sort of setup of, you know, he's he gets in the in the accident, Christine dies, he becomes Doctor Strange, and then we sort of I assume like fast forward and he has lived his life catching up to the present, but he's still thinking of her and then he he does his his thing. Uh, and I love it's something I've always loved about the idea of, of Doctor Strange um, is it's kind of a twofold thing because the Sanctum Sanctorum is decorated in a very old fashioned Victorian sort of way, which I like. I find that interior decor very cozy and comfortable. And uh, it, it just reminds me of my youth, you know, growing up with my grandmother who had a lot of that kind of stuff in her home. So it just made me it puts me at ease. And then that doubled with the idea of like, what do Stephen and Wong just do when there's not like, they just hang out. It's evening, you know, they're staring out the window. Wong's like, I'm going to go make some tea. That just feels like the most cozy at ease, like chill superhero location in any comic ever. And I just want to be there. Ryan is my point. I just want to be, I want to live in the sanctum with them. (laughs) <laughs> I, I honestly i couldn't agree more man it's uh i personally me i think they're always just like you know hey what does this artifact do and they study it and then you know so on and so forth you know but like dr strange i think one thing i like about this what if experience and also what i hope to see in multiverse of madness is um dr strange has done weird battles like he's fought death he's fought eternity He's, he's done all sorts of things, and I want to see more of that. I think that this was a pretty good sample, but I need to. I, I think it needs to be pushed further and just take it as far as it can go. But I think you're right. I think we're actually going to see a couple more episodes of Doctor Strange based on what I've seen from the trailer. Um, but, uh, I yeah, I think we need more. Like, I feel like this episode was actually the anchor in which it's like, okay, guys, this is this is where the source of the story is starting to build, right? Where where I feel as Loki and Falcon Winter Soldier, uh, actually, yeah, I feel like Loki and Falcon Winter Soldier kind of set up the premise pretty quickly, so you knew where the story was starting to lead you down. But Wandavision mm-hmm. and What If they don't really give you a clear idea of what this world is or the, what the narrative is going to be. Like I still I all I know is it's about the Watcher 
he's talking about how like oh yeah there's infinite possibilities out there and he's like but i'm not allowed to interfere but i can show you it all and i see it all and, and yeah it's just like okay well what's the point like what what is the point that you're showing us all these universes and this episode really kind of hammers it home with the whole like you know this this what you're about to do could cause a collapse of the entire universe i love that you compare it to wandavision man because now that you mention it yeah like the first four episodes of wandavision were kind of a what if you know she it was a what if of her own creation and, yeah. and we're seeing two characters who we're familiar with living lives that we are unfamiliar with and you know the whole time we're just like how did this happen how did we get here what brought us to this point is this real is this not real and then to turn it around and be like no this is not real here's why it's not real and this is what the story is going to be that's a wonderful comparison uh right. and i i hope the show keeps us guessing the way wandavision did i hope it does too but I, I i think i need some story here like i need some center point to work with and i'm just kind of like like it's kind of nice to be like oh yeah what if you know steve rogers couldn't do the process we would have done it you know like i get that but what like this is why i watch is annoying as hell because he just sits there and just let, watches all this stuff happen because he's a watcher but he doesn't want to interfere because he doesn't want to make the same mistake which he did in the comics. Do you think if you had a house party and Uatu was one of the guests and like you were ordering pizza for everybody and, you know, everybody's chipping in, whatever. And he's like, oh, no, I, I can't chip in. I'm not really supposed to interfere. And then the, the doorbell rings and it's like, oh, the pizza's here. And you're you're like really preoccupied because you're trying to host and you're you're setting things up. And you're like, Uatu, can you please go get the door and grab the pizza? Oh, I'm sorry, Ryan. I can't do that. I, I'm sworn. Yeah. Sworn to not. Hundred percent. That's exactly what it is. Like, because like, what's crazy is in the comics, he interferes. He does the one thing. He does the one thing he shouldn't have done, and it's like he teaches. Like, I can't remember like the specific thing, but he like essentially he interferes, and um, it like it's almost like Wakanda getting the vibranium because of <laughs> that. Because of him interfering, it's the equivalent of Wakanda getting the vibranium. And because of that, uh, it creates Galactus. So I don't know what, I can't remember what specifically happens, but something happens because he interferes and something good happens. And then the bad thing is Galactus gets created. And then this is that. Whoever's responsible for Galactus, shame on you. It's Uwatu. Uwatu, Uwatu is responsible for Galactus. Horrible man. Horrible Terrible. man, that Uwatu. And that's why he's like, I swore never to interfere, you know? Yeah. Like, he does the whole... Actually, I have to say, though, I think it's Jeffrey Wright. His voice is... Oh, I could listen oh, to him God. do that Uwatu voice all day. <laughs> now, the uh, You know the moment in Age of Ultron where they just Vision just casually hands the hammer to Thor? And it's like yes. this big... <laughs> I, I had the same reaction this episode when... Uatu speaks to us and Dr. Strange goes, who was that? That was such a chilling moment. That was so well done. And I wasn't expecting that to go any further this week than it did. I was just expecting that one little taste of like, ooh, he can hear him. Uh, it's kind of like, um, I don't know if you remember, there's like this early episode of Avatar The Last Airbender where Aang is in the spirit world and he's riding on a spirit dragon and nobody can see him. And he flies over the land, but Uncle Iroh happens to look up and he sees the dragon and the spirit. And we're like, whoa, why can he see the spirit? Uh, it, it's just this, this really cool, uh, like super fast way of telling the audience there's something special going on here. Yes, that moment was just, because like, <laughs> I love, because again, I love seeing Uwatu being like the silhouette in the, in the background. And I love that he's like, I love that Doctor Strange had that moment because it breaks. It's almost like breaking the wall, and it's just that 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 actualization of of like like Watch is talking to us, but now this person now now Doctor Strange is talking to Watch, right? So it's kind of like that. It's kind of like there's now an A, there was an A B conversation, but now C has come in to kind of add a layer to it, right? So yes. you know, one day, I, I mean, or, or even with this show, it would be cool to kind of get to like a uh, never-ending story moment where like 
you just follow this like narrative of the story and then all of a sudden it's like you play a role in the story which is pretty crazy and i i think that because of this happening because of 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 this uh awareness that strange has now i think it's going to take us down the path that you predicted last week and i think we're going to get to a point where it's uh it's going to turn into something else entirely by the time we're in episode 10. And I keep thinking of something like, uh, like metal gear solid as an example, um, where I can't remember which of the games it was. It was one of the first two metal gear solid games, you know, the, the general who's always calling you and he's like snake, uh, yeah. you have to go into this room. Right. And then at some point, you get late in the game where something happens to you. And I don't know if snake is like on acid or something weird goes wrong. And the game starts flipping out a little bit and the guy calls you and he's like, bloop, 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 and like, it gets really freaky and weird. I think that might happen here where this strange that we met here, this dark strange uh, survives and tries to make amends for what he did by interfering in other universes. Uh, and so I think we'll get to a point where in like episode nine or whatever, we'll have that opening sequence where Uatu is like infinite worlds, whatever, but strange is going to start taking over. And so it'll be more of that metal gear thing where it'll be like infinite. And like, it'll glitch out and he'll come in and he'll start a strange will come in and start like messing with things uh, to the point where he's interacting with these other universes and saying, Hey, there's other universes. Uh, I think that's what might end up happening here. And that sounds really exciting to me. It does. I mean, it's funny you bring that up too because Isabella made an interesting comment while watching it, and at the at the end where he's like shooting the the the, the, the little cage that he's in or whatever as this universe is collapsing, um, Isabella thought that it was the the counter Doctor Strange inside of him making him see his nightmare. Ooh, right. Um, and that's definitely a possibility. Uh, I mean, again, I think what's interesting is, is like this could have a domino effect in the, the next few episodes. Like it could like it could uh, it could have like the next episode, like, you know, it could be another day in the, in the life of Thor, for example. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, his universe starts collapsing and it's like, okay, what's causing all this? And then on the 10th episode, you introduce the Fantastic Four and you cast the voice actors or sorry, you cast the actors who are going to be playing the characters as the voices oh and, my God. and do it that way. But that's, that's, that's Ryan, like total on like rumor train and like, just, you know, it's speculating the crazy, the crazy things, but on the other side of the coin is again, you can just loop it back to the dark Strange we're going to see in multiverse of madness and tie that in as one big, nice, neat little package to note though, the, at the end when the universe is collapsing, he's kind of in a cage. Like he is, in this, you know, similar thing that you were pointing out, uh, or I feel like you're alluding to one division is kind of a similar thing where he's got that field around him. That's like the reality, you know, crumbling in kind of thing. Yeah, it, it's it's like he is he's the architect of his own prison, just like Wanda yes. was. Um, yeah, that that visual of that last shot was very cool. L- let me ask you though, as a as the Fantastic Four guy, um, how, how would you be satisfied with what you just said if that ended up happening? Like that's the actually, that's the way they. I actually would. Um, I, now when, when you say I'm a Fantastic Four guy, I'm excited to see the Fantastic Four, um, mm. just because of, you know, I just, they deserve to be there and they, they are almost the Rosetta Stone of the Marvel Universe. Like they define things, they introduce a lot of things, a lot of major events happen around them. So they are yes. like the best tour guide for the, the Marvel Universe and someone who, I think what makes me a fan of the Fantastic Four is I kind of want to see all the puzzle pieces fall into place as a Marvel fan. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to see the X-Men there. I want to see Fantastic Four there. Once I see that all the pieces are in play, I'll just be happy and content, and I don't care what happens next because everything's in play. 
You know what I mean? Like, but until that time, I just, I want Fantastic Four in there. I want them a part of the narrative because I just want to see, I, I'm at that point where I just want to see all the characters playing around with, like playing around together. Like, you know, because it's just what all the stories you can do. Um, and just kind of like a side note on that very thing is, is like, for example, we could see a secret Avengers story because all the casts are all in the Marvel cinematic universe as of right now, except for one and one, and that one is coming and that's Moon Knight, but Mm -hmm. secret Avengers consist of cap black widow, Valkyrie war machine, um, Moon Knight. Oh, and we need one more who hasn't been cast yet, but beasts. And that's Mm -hmm. a very, uh, a very kind of variety of roster that I would love to see all these characters play together. You know yeah, I, mean? I love how eclectic that mix is. I've never heard of them. So what they just like they avenge under the radar? Like they do. Uh Cap wears his uh his uniform that he wears in Winter Soldier, the the, the undercover one. Um uh, but yeah, they're they're undercover Avengers because something ends up happening. I don't I'm only reading the comic book right now. But something mm-hmm. ends up happening and they need to uh get to the bottom of it. So they kind of go under you know, they go under the radar as a covert ops team. And uh, Cap goes out and recruits who he thinks would be best for this covert ops team. And it's a pretty good roster, though. It's a very, very good mix. You had me at Beast. I know, oh. right? I was excited that Moon Knight was in it because he's, from what I've been reading in the comics, he's a weird character. But he's awesome. Like, he's a fun character to watch. But, he, like, this guy's got, like, multiple personality disorder. And how is he functioning on a team? You know what I mean? Like, how do you how do you have someone like that function in a team? And that, to me, already that's a story that I want to see. Yeah, uh, I I think they'll do it. I think they'll do. Mm-hmm. I think Secret Avengers will be a thing. Uh, but the the other side of the coin, and and to bring it back into what we're talking about, is like, yeah, I want to see the Fantastic Four in this multiverse thing. Why? Because you could do so much. Like, there's so many stories you can branch off and do, and. Um, and yeah, like you have Ant Man come in, you know, like have all these characters jump in and out. We're we're at the point now where like I'm kind of getting a little tired of like introducing this one little character and just it feels like a chess game where you move one piece and you have to wait to see where all the other pieces go, and then you get the, all the big event. And I'm kind of a little tired of waiting, to be honest. I want to see <laughs> some introductions like yesterday. Like, you know, like let's get on with this. Did you hear the newest uh, person who is interested in playing the thing? No. John Cena. Oh, you'd be the he'd be the best thing. It'd be perfect. <laughs> Honestly, he has the best set of humor for it. I mean, I don't know how the DC Marvel contract works, but because um, yeah. he is still doing. Oh yeah, he's fine. Because yeah, he's got Peacemaker, but I mean, we have. We have, uh, there's a bit of crossover, like Idris Elba has done both now. I yeah. think they'll be fine. I The only thing that concerns me with this is, I don't know if John Cena can do the Thing's voice. Because if the Thing don't sound like the Thing, then it isn't even really the Thing anymore at that point. You know, my brother was talking about it. He's like, uh, he's like, you know, the Thing is an interesting character because he's like this... Uh, he brings a lot of culture to the Marvel world and uh, he has a very interesting story. Um, and on top of that, he'd be a Jewish character, which is nice to have that kind of, again, add, add to that level of culture that we're seeing with something like Chung chi uh, and bringing in all that Asian culture that I'm very mm-hmm. excited for. Um, but yeah, no, I agree with you. But at the same time, he, John Cena has the build because, you know, um, uh, with the thing, uh, with the thing, it's that when when he's Ben Grimm, he's actually this handsome, super jacked, but very smart guy who has been who's like lived through the ghetto, and uh, and like he comes from the Bronx in the worst possible area, um, and he ends up proving his academic strength to a point where he becomes an astronaut. Right. Yeah. He's he, he's uh, he's a triple threat. He can sing, dance, and act. He's I don't know why he's still single, to be honest. I think John Cena can do. I think John Cena has actually flexed a lot of acting muscles in various ways. Um, and I think actually because he's a wrestler and has that kind of gritty voice, I think he could pull it off. I, I 
again with the right training and the right dialogue coach you can do anything you, you yeah anything. here's hoping here's hoping because uh, i mean I think... I'm, I'm trying to think of a trying to think of an acting example as to you know someone who really turned a performance around in uh in this thing but um <laughs> I can't think of one off the top of my head at the moment. It's tricky, right? Because it, it, it really varies character to character. I mean, growing up, I had a very precise image of what Dr. Mm -hmm. Octopus was to me. And that included the uh, Bavarian accent that the voice actor Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. put into it in the Spider-Man cartoon. So when Alfred Molina comes along in the movie and Dr. Octopus just has an American accent like this. Um, it didn't feel jarring because it was just, it, it was easy to accept um, that this was a, a realistic portrayal of this guy. And that was okay with me. But for some reason, I feel like if I was to see the thing in a movie and he just sounded like I do, I'd be like, oh, I don't want to well, listen to this. I don't know because Alfred had a pretty unique voice even though it was an American accent, he still has his own kind of unique spin to the voice and mm -hmm. it grows on you, you know, like in the trailer, seeing a no way home trailer, that hello Peter thing he does, like everyone's talking about it, but I think honestly, it, it still, it grows on you. I think it is his own, it is kind of like a doc Ock sounding voice. I agree with you. The accent may not be there, but the tone is there. I think yeah. the tone is, he definitely, you know, emulate that. And, you know, it actually comes to mind, uh, finally, the actor I was thinking of, uh, Bradley Cooper is Rocket. You would have never mm -hmm. pegged him to do that voice. If, if if no one told you that was Bradley Cooper, like if the movie never told you it was Bradley Cooper that did it, you would have never pegged him out that it was him. Yeah, totally. Totally not. So if, uh, if he can pull that off, I'm sure John Cena can do a an accent. I hope so. I just want the thing to sound like the thing. Well, yeah, and I still genius. haven't seen the. Uh, I still haven't seen whatever the, the um, the newest Fantastic Four movie. So I don't know if he sounded like the thing, but I'm willing to bet uh, that movie didn't get much right from what I hear. So I'm willing to bet he don't. I yeah no I, I think that I I actually the more I think about John Cena playing the role, I, the more I actually want it to happen now. <laughs> for me, I mean, we talked about dream casting already, but for me, I think one actor that that needs to be filled one actor that needs to be in the MCU that would be perfect for this character is uh, Josh Kamel as Cyclops. Josh Kamel as Cyclops. Okay. I think it's Kamel okay. or Kamel. Oh, um, sorry. He did, he, he did Rick Flagg. He was Rick Flagg in the Suicide Squad. Oh, Joel Kinnaman. Joel Kinnaman. That's the one. Joel Kinnaman. Uh, he's uh, he's in a bit of trouble right now um, uh -oh. with uh, some kind of, abuse i don't know if it was physical or sexual but from what i heard he is he's in some hot water for some things so i don't know i didn't read that and i apologize but uh <laughs> man i would have loved to have seen him in cyclops i think <laughs> i think it would have been perfect personally he's the right type of boring for cyclops he is. <laughs> wow. You do not like Cyclops at all. No, I actually like Cyclops. I just don't like Joel Kinnaman very much. You remember oh, that Altered okay. Carbon show he made where the whole time he's just like, I am a macho man. This is how I talk. I <laughs> loved, <laughs> okay, first of all, I love that season. Okay. That out of the, I love Anthony Mackey. He did a pretty great job. But I feel like the writing severely lacked in the second season wow. when it had all the right actors. And then in the first one, it had all the right actors. Sorry, not quite the cast, but oh man, did it have um, did it have a great story. So you know what, sir? You know what? The first <laughs> season with Joel Kinnaman was amazing. All right? I, I remember thanking God when I found out that Anthony Mackie was replacing him in season two. I was like, oh my God, praise the Lord. Somebody with charisma <laughs> is playing this character. Wow. <laughs> you know what though? I was I was excited because the actress from Dollhouse was his sister in the first season. I love that actress. Oh I think yeah. She's amazing. Yeah. She's her really name. Good. Her name right is there. um oh boy. Is it not, no, I'm thinking of somebody else. Um 
yeah, I thought of another name, but it's not her. But yeah, she is, she was really cool. And I think she came back in season two, but yeah, she was great. She yeah, should she, be in Marvel too. Get her in Marvel. Yeah, she should definitely be in Marvel. Um, I mean, you know, she's she's worked with the Whedons, so she, she's got the connects, connections for it. Um, uh, yeah, it's going to kill me now. I really, oh. I follow her at everything. I thought I got the name, and again, it's not the right name. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Oh, Daichen Lackman. That's Dai it, Chen yeah. Lackman. Yeah, I don't know if I'm pronouncing either of the first or last names right, but that, yeah. Um, yeah, she was awesome. Put her, put her in uh, any any Marvel thing. She she was a Honestly, kick ass lady. She could be. She would be a really cool Psylocke, you know. Or uh, yes. Oh man, she would. Uh, oh, there's so many characters. Again, I I am uh, totally drawing a blank here, but uh, she would be a kick ass Psylocke, um, and or. <laughs> I don't know, but it'd be a great character. Um, she'd be she'd be great for a character. Um, yeah, no. So, uh, whew. anyway, my point is is yes. Uh, for what if I would love to see the Fantastic Four introduced? I again, I think these Disney Plus platforms are a great way to introduce characters. Wandavision, we got three new characters potentially if you count the villain four, but four new characters, four. Mm -hmm. And in their costumes and, and everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man. Cause I, I mean, we even got uh, spectrum and we uh, photon, this photon or whatever. And we even got the kids Wiccan and uh speed kid guy. Yeah. Speed kid. But uh, I, think, yeah. I think they're still on reserve. They're still like, Feige's like, don't grow up too fast because we're going to need yeah. you. Don't age too quickly. We need you at Tom Holland's <laughs> age. And just like, <laughs> um, But uh, freaking uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, we got US Agent, we got Battlestar, and uh, we got uh, Contessa. Yes. Mm -hmm. Technically, again, if you count Flag Smash, it's four. But, but Battlestar died, but we still have US Agent and Contessa. But uh, again, like, give us characters. The more, the merrier. Exactly. I think I think the shows so far have been doing a really good job of giving us the characters, uh, and and they, I I, I don't think they're going to stop anytime soon with that either. Uh, they might even start using the shows as their primary resource for introducing people, and then, you know, sliding them like cards across a casino table into the movies. Like okay, uh, Wiccan, you can go right here. You can be in uh, Ant Man and the Lost in Quantumania. And, oh, who do we have here? Uh, let's see. We we've got uh, we've got Photon. Uh, well, Photon can just go in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, and you know it just becomes this little this little thing. Hell yeah! Uh, Hell yeah, man! Like introduce more. Like get this get this whole thing going. I mean, the rumors is Song Chi introduces quite a few characters. Is a rumor. Well, if that trailer is any indication, I mean, like, Hook Hand yeah. Man, Paint Face, uh, the lady Death that he dealer. fights, Death Dealer. Razor thing. Fist, Death Dealer. The lady that he fights is, is her, her name's like, kind of like, um, is her name's kind of just like, just a name, I feel like. Yeah, it's uh, just like her like, real name, right? She doesn't have like, yeah. a, like a comic -y name, yeah. And then they're going to drop like, oh yeah, by the way, it's like the, the female Iron Fist, like. Right. Uh, so there's that and then um but yeah no i mean if it's any indication of the trailer which again they really should have left abomination out of that trailer there's I there's know. literally no I reason know. no rhyme or reason for doing that um so we don't know but yeah like introduce more characters like i want the playground to be big um and what if i think we haven't really i mean Again, we got we got to see and revisit Peggy Carter and give her like a really fun spotlight. But I really feel like we haven't really introduced characters yet. Right. Well, I th and I think it's going to start doing that. Uh, when you brought up the librarian, I thought that's a great place to start. Put this guy in here. He had a great look. He had his like his staff. He had that hat. He just he looked like an action figure. He looked like a Marvel character. So I will. Uh, 
I was going to say I'll put money on it, but I don't have any of that. Uh, I will. I'll just put put. Uh, I will just stake my word as a Marvel fan on it that I think um, we will very very likely see that man, that librarian man, uh, in Multiverse of Madness. I almost jumped out of my seat because I was like, "Oh my god, is that Doctor Voodoo?" And I was like, "Oh my god, Doctor Voodoo!" And then I was like, "Wait, no, that can't be him." Because he doesn't look anything. Yeah, because like Voodoo's him. not uh, Voodoo's not a nice gentleman, right? He's not pals with Strange. Doctor Voodoo is another Doctor Strange. Like he's a, he's a he's kind of like a Voodoo witch doctor kind of thing. Um, but uh, he's he at first he was at odds with Doctor Strange, and then eventually they become friends, and the best of friends. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, so at first, and they hey, kinda... we still have uh, we still have yet to meet Clea. Yes. Oh my God, we still have yet to meet Clea, and again, she's a big, big character, man. Like really mm. big. Um, even Nightmare, because we heard rumors that Nightmare is a character as well. But um, but the reason why I bring like I always jumped out of my seat and saying that's Doctor Voodoo was because um, uh. The reason I say that is because his brother is in the in the first movie. Oh, the the other doctor. The when they go to the, the New York house for the first time and the, the guys mm-hmm. protecting it, um, that's that's his brother, Daniel Drum. Yeah, Daniel Drum. Nice. So he's there. We had that character drop. Um, I there's an actor I know who would be perfect. For Doctor Voodoo, but I, I can never remember his name. Uh, but he's in uh, he's in the new Cowboy Bebop movie. Uh, is, so is, he does voice acting as well then? Because I isn't Cowboy is Cowboy Bebop animated? Did, I don't know doing, anime oh, stuff too well. Oh, you didn't know? Uh, they're doing a no. uh, a real life version of Cowboy Bebop. Oh, okay, and it's, um, uh, it's got quite the cast. Um, give me a second. I know exactly. If it doesn't have at least one cowboy dancing to bebop music, I'm going to be very upset. Uh, Either that or a mutant warthog wearing snakeskin boots in Arizona. It has to have one of those two things or both. uh, Mustafa Shakir. I think he played in the second season of Luke Cage as the villain. Bushmaster? Yeah. He would have made a great Dr. Voodoo. Okay. Well, yeah. and even if I remember right, in season two of Luke Cage, they set up um, that that girl who worked at like the potion shop to become, I think Lady Nightshade is her superhero name. And I think in the comics, she has ties to Brother Voodoo or whatever, or, like they work together or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, yes, you're, you're on the right track there. And again, it's just because like, yeah, just rolling characters. Just drop their names already. Stop like teasing. Like, well, it could be somebody. <laughs> like, me... I feel like I feel like Captain Feige just sits back and like, oh, let them speculate. Like, I feel like that's what he does. Like every single time. Let them speculate. He's just like holding a bunch of hundred dollar bills, and he's like, "Ooh, it's hot in here. All the speculation is making me warm." Uh, <laughs> Let, let me uh, let me pose this question to you. We're still reeling from the the Spider-Man Far um, No Way Home trailer. I have to. Yeah. I, I keep calling it Far From Home, and that's incorrect. So I lose points right there. Uh, so we're still reeling from that trailer, and we have the possibility in this show, in What If, to really get down and dirty and weird with some of the worlds we visit. So let me ask you this, Ryan: If you could pick one character from any non-MCU movie, Marvel movie that's non-MCU, to show up in What If? Who would you pick? Oh, oh God. That's not MCU. Ooh, that's hard. Mm-hmm. Uh... Oh, oh, I got one. All right. <laughs> I got one already. Uh, that's not MCU is Apocalypse. I would like to see a better Apocalypse done. Wow. Okay. And it's not Oscar Isaac's fault, man. He's, yeah. 
to be honest, I if I were even in his shoes and I had a chance to play in that movie, I would have totally done it. And I would have been, you know, all over that. Mm-hmm. However, that that role was not for him, and it's not his fault. It's not his fault. And he's got a much better role now, and I'm very excited for him to play Moon Knight. But um, Sam. Uh, but yeah, I would love to see Apocalypse done right. I think he's a character that can do a lot of really cool stories. Um, especially with what happened with Cable and Dead uh, Cable and Deadpool two, like imagine a proper apocalypse in that kind of setting. Oh, oh! If 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 we're being real, I um I always found Apocalypse to be my least favorite X Men villain. Um, he just every time he came on, he bored me because I think I feel like. You know, he, he's this this big guy who's just always, you know, he's doing the classic villain thing where he's like, I'm going to take over and you are going to bow to me and I do not speak in contractions because I am very serious. And I have never, ever seen anybody clearly define what his powers are and what mm-hmm. his powers aren't. I have never had that clearly laid out. Yeah. And I don't know if that's the point, if he's just like like Dracula, where he's like, I can do whatever the author finds convenient at the moment, or if he actually has a set parameter of powers. But I feel like because he's so limitless, it, it makes him less interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I know where you're coming from, for sure. But he's a, he's a, he's a long game kind of villain, you know? Like, he, he's a force of nature. He's like Galactus, except... Uh, I, I, but even me, I can't describe like what his powers are. But he's like the first mutant, essentially, and in, in what he's able to do. Um, but here's the thing: I would say like Magneto would be a fantastic character. But the fact of the matter is, is like eventually, I I'm pretty sure we'll get Magneto in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, I hope it's Fassbender returns as Magneto, just because like the performance was too good. Like his performance of Magneto was amazing. First class was just like a intensely amazing experience and i feel that i would love to say like yeah magneto because like he's been you know he's been all over the comics in different ways and forms and all this stuff but the fact of the matter is the performances were so good that i could be okay with not seeing them for a long time but apocalypse i would like to see done right or even uh, I would actually like to see Ghost Rider make a return. Johnny Blaze. Well, but we got but we got um, uh, Robbie uh, Robles in um, in Agents of Shield, which t- kind of counts as the MCU. It, it kind of counts, but like I'm talking like just specifically, if you were to see a non MCU character just in What If, and they never you know you never see them again, oh. they don't come back in any movies. It's just like a little you know, guest star of somebody uh, just for funsies. So if you were to get Apocalypse, it would have to be the Oscar Isaac Apocalypse showing up in What If. Okay, well, when you premise it that way. Yeah. uh, Then I would say, I would say Johnny Blaze is Ghost Rider. And I'll tell you why, because I want to see Nick Cage reprise his role as Ghost Rider in in a similar because like I to me I know I feel I feel as if I feel as if if we're gonna do Ghost Rider from any point on they're not gonna do Johnny Blaze like because it's it's been done mm-hmm. and there's many iterations of Ghost Rider that would be really cool oh my god actually you know what this question is opening all sorts of doors that I want to <laughs> just go down I would love to see a What If 2099 <gasps> yes. Absolutely. And then they, and then they use uh, they use Spider Man twenty ninety nine, which I believe was was voiced by Oscar Isaac. He was, and then he'll meet Apocalypse and Moon Knight, and they'll all get into a fight. <laughs> I and again, I would love to see that, but because like they, uh, I've been getting back into the comic books now after you know after a little hiatus because comic books are expensive. Mm-hmm. But I found a new medium in which I can read comics, and I love it. Uh, I, at first, I was hesitant, but uh, I'm now reading comics digitally through uh, Comicsology, 
And they actually did a new run of Marvel 2099, and it's it's a cool graphic novel experience. They're all like one shot issues, like they're they're one issue that goes through a character story with like one major overarching story. Mm-hmm. But Ghost Rider 2099 is so cool. It's <laughs> about a hacker who like he like plugs his mind into. They find this robot, and it has no power core. It's literally just a robot skeleton. And the guy goes goes like Jackson Matrix style to kind of like learn about the robot. And in the end, the robot comes to life, trapping his brain and inside the machine. And he becomes this cybernetic ghost rider. And then it explodes. So he loses his body and he becomes the new ghost rider that way. And it's so, and it, and it <laughs> it's funny too, because he's like, he has these, he has his family with him. His dad's like the head scientist of the lab and his brother's like there as well. And he, he comes alive and the explosion kills his actual body. And his dad like scrunches through the laboratory. He's like, oh my God, son, are you okay? And he's like, dad. And he's like, he's all ghost rider. And he just <laughs> just rips his heart out. It's so good. It's the best comic book I've ever read thus far. It's it's just amazing. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like ghost Yeah, rider. comicsology is really cool. You use it? Yeah. I do uh, use comicsology. Yeah. I don't. I don't use it often, uh, only for like stuff that's like, I want to read this, but A, I can't find it, or B, I can find it, but it's going to cost me an arm and a leg. Uh, yeah. So I use it for those things. Um, but I don't I don't uh, purchase too many. The only comics I purchase are uh, like at all are the new Star Wars stuff, and those I get as trades. Um, and I don't even get those all the time, just when like, you know, I, I say I kind of have to save up for them, even though they're only like twenty five bucks. Because still, that's a that's a lot of money for a little thin book. Uh, so, but yeah, Comicsology does have a lot of cool stuff on it. The only thing it doesn't have that I wish it had is the old nineties Knuckles comics from the Sonic the Hedgehog Archie run, oh, because the yeah. the rights to those don't exist anymore. Nobody owns the rights, so they can't distribute them digitally. So I will never be able to read that series, and it breaks my heart because I've only read two issues out of that series and they're so disjointed and i'm just like i want to know what happens to knuckles maybe i never will that's really sad man so okay yeah, it is. <laughs> so let's let's get out of the sadness and and how would you answer your question uh who i would like to see and what if it's it's funny you picked ghost rider because i would like to see sam elliott's ghost rider the gravekeeper the cowboy ghost rider. Oh, I yes. found the contract of San Van Gonza and I'm going to take you there now. I'll use my power oh, to God. ride over, but not to help you fight. That's, that's what I want to see. Right. Uh, honestly. Yeah. Ghost rider episode would be perfect. And then again, it, it passed, it could be a pass the torch episode is you have Nick cage come in voice, do the whole voices and everything. And then just like, and then, you know, Whoever the new Ghost Rider is going to be, there's there's rumors that we're going to potentially see a lady Ghost Rider because there is there is one in the eighties, um, uh, or uh, it could be Danny Ketch as well. Uh, but yes. yeah, have him pass the torch to the next Ghost Rider, and then in the next MCU real life thing, then we now know it's like, oh yeah, we saw What If, we now know the torch has been passed, we go from there. But oh also God. 2099 Mar- what if episode just because I I have a feeling we'll never see a live action 2099. I mean, prove me wrong, Kevin. Prove me wrong. But I really doubt it. It's just too far fetched. I think we'll see a snippet, like just like a blink and you miss it cameo of Spider Man 2099 in No Way Home. I think we will. Uh, we might get lucky it's we might get lucky yeah but i doubt it i really do um you know what you know i'd rather see if we're being honest i'd rather see scarlet spider just because he he looks cool and i know the clone saga is a headache for a lot of people but the idea of this you know what how it ended appeals to me the most because it's like okay clone bullshit notwithstanding now there's this guy named ben riley who's like i guess i'll put this suit on and also be a Spider-Man. And that to me just, it, it's, it, it just sounds so cool. It's like, hey, there's another guy doing the same thing. Like, 
I I would love for that to happen. And then he gets a spin off. But yes, please, yes, please. I would love to see a Ben Riley Scarlet Spider. Um, I remember in the '90s, just like, oh my God, he wears a hood. Like, it's just like, <laughs> his 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 outfit was so '90s, but it was the coolest thing. Um, yeah, no, I would like to see that too. Again, like that's the thing about these what if episodes is. I, and I think that that kind of answers what I was trying to get at in like past episodes is like, I don't want it to be the consistent, consistent, like, Oh, what if this happened, this would happen. It's like, okay, I get like, you know, there's infinite possibilities of decisions that characters make that could cause a whole different story. But like, you know, what if, you know, what if the all the events of Marvel led to 2099? What would that world look like? Like, because we haven't seen it and we don't know anything about it. And that would be so cool. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, that's, I, that's, that's what I'm worried about is the pattern. I'm worried about the pattern being like, what if this happens uh, and the story turns out to be this? It was really cool to see this one because it, it did go very different in terms of yeah. how far it went. But to me, it still, it still felt like, it still felt too much like Doctor Strange in the sense of like, okay, we get it. Like the, yeah, I get it moment. Okay. Yeah, I get it. If Christine Everhart, they were together and he couldn't be with her, he'd be dark and evil. We get that. Like that's the, the yeah, I get it thing is starting to get to me. But if they did like, if they did an episode of like a watch being like, okay, you know, what if the Avengers were able to protect the world for so long? Like, what would the world be like? Yeah. What would the world be like? Show me that. Like, and like, you know, like uh, they have like, peace for, they have like world peace for like five years, but like, Galactus is coming. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's the kind of stuff I want to see where it's like, okay, what if the Avengers were able to do this? Okay, and how long does that play out for? And what happens as a consequence? As opposed to like, oh, what if Steve Rogers couldn't be Captain America? Well, Peggy Carter becomes Captain Britain. And like, like I get it. I get it. Like, that was cool. That was a fun first round. I love seeing that. And the second round, like, the child being Black Panther, or, uh, uh, sorry, Star Lord. Really cool idea. Uh, but like, tell me like a world... Tell me about, like, what happens to the Marvel Universe in a different way. Like, you know what I mean? As opposed to, like, this decision equals, you know, X equals Y and the story becomes Y. I don't want that anymore. I want, like, X uh, X happens, so then it takes you all the way to Z. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I can dig that. And And I wouldn't mind seeing them have some fun with the fact that it's an animated series. So have some like do something with either you know one of the wizards or with loki where like let's say a spell gets cast or something and the animation changes imagine an episode that looks like the 90s cartoons but with oh, can you imagine so like cool. i would i would just be falling over and drooling there'd be like spittle coming out of my mouth i'd be so happy <laughs> Something like that, something to to play with the sensibility that you have an animated series, so you you can be more flexible. Uh, it, I think they can they can squeeze a lot of fun out of that if they're careful with it. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, like take me take me places. Like you know, that's the thing. It's still you know what? Now I figured out the 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 way to articulate what I'm trying to say is like something happens. And it changes it, but it still resorts back to the story. Like the story still plays in with the within the story we know, which is like Doctor Strange right. had Christine Palmer. He would go all crazy and evil, but in the end, it's still the world of Doctor Strange. You know what I mean? Like it's still the world we know, and it's like Guardians. Like you know what? Uh, what if Xandar was able to push back Thanos, and we see Nova? Right. You know, that that to me would be cool because again we're not going back to oh the guardians being the guardians gee, 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 gee. you know like it's <laughs> it's it's now become a story about you know why this event is so critical and what will happen because of it that happens but to me it's like 
it feels like everything that happens, it kind of sets back to like, oh, well, this is just, this is just the world of wonder. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this stuff can happen, and it's like, okay, well, and that's why, and that's why I think I do like this one though the most is because I feel like something's going to happen because of this, and it's going to affect a lot of things. Same. I I really liked this episode a lot. I liked how dark it got. It really didn't pull any punches. Um, I genuinely felt so bad for Christine when he did bring her back and she's just like terrified because I, anybody would be, uh, that like everything was sort of, it was a very adult story and it was all firing on all the right cylinders. And I did get that sense too. I did get that sense that there's more going on and we haven't heard the last of this. I really have a weird feeling that somebody was trying to kill strange. Cause like, you keep hitting that Lamborghini. Who's driving that car back there? That is that that person is not okay. They're either evil or they're not okay. So uh, you know there there's more to this story, uh, and I I look forward to hopefully uncovering it. But I I did really really like What If episode four, and uh, I think if both our calculations are correct, um, Jeffrey Wright is going to have a lot more to do in the coming weeks. So. I hope we see him in future projects. I hope we see him in Multiverse of Madness. I want to see him, like, even if it's the silhouette, that would be so cool. And Doctor mm-hmm. Strange talking to him? He's like, like, Doctor Strange, like, don't worry, I got this. And he's like, I've seen versions of you where you don't got this. And, like, gets into <laughs> that kind of thing. Like, that, that would be so good. I hope that's an exact quote from the movie, man. I hope so. Just to hear <laughs> Jeffrey Wright say, I've seen versions of you where you don't got this. That would make my day. <laughs> right? Oh, man, I'm telling you, that, that's it. That's that's what I want to see. I, I do want to see Jeffrey Wright, like, play in a lot of scenes with other characters. I hope he comes in the Fantastic Four. I think he I think he's a character that will work with Fantastic Four. And yet another reason why Fantastic Four should be in What If. Mark my words, people. There was a photo of an actor reading a Fantastic Four comic, and he's like, guess what I'm going to be doing? And it's... It played under the radar, but I don't know. It's 50-50 in my opinion. I, I think that guy's a big old liar. Uh, we'll see yeah, what happens. Kevin Feige, uh, Kevin Feige's pretty good at like putting out the fires pretty quickly. So, Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll see. Well, that has been What If Episode 4. Um, I, I really like this, and I, I think we have not seen the last of, uh, let's call him Dr. Bizarro, because he, he is strange, but he's the Bizarro version. Uh, Ryan, where can the good people find you when you're not in the multiverse? As always, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash twitch.tv forward slash Xbox Canada. And of course, you can find me on Instagram. I'm actually going to be putting a little more effort now into my Instagram life. So you can uh, check me out on there at Ryan J. Whitehead. And you can also check me out on Twitter at Crusader Online. Ryan's Instagram effort is all bubble bath photos of himself. 24 hour mm-hmm. bubble bath coverage mm-hmm. all day, every Better day. Better believe it. Better believe it. It is steamy goodness. Uh, and you can find me also on the Instagram and on Twitter sometimes at Andrew Fantasia and on the Andrew Fantasia YouTube channel, where you can find me very shortly talking about uh, counting down to James Bound. James Bound. Counting James down Bound. to James Bound 25. Uh, and if you haven't seen them yet, my uh, um, Fast and the Furious a, uh, a video essay about the lessons we can learn from the Fast and the Furious saga, because uh, I watched them all for the first time. So you can find those on my YouTube channel as well. Lots of male posturing going on there. Uh, lots of fun. <laughs> and, the- uh, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to cut in right here because this is a big announcement. Ooh. At the time of this recording, tomorrow we will be seeing... Shang Chi with advanced screening tickets, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's right. Mm. So, if you live in Eastern Standard tomorrow, what I want you to do is I want you to look at your watch at 6:59 p.m. and I want you to pause and reflect and think. I know exactly what Ryan and Andrew are doing right now, and I know what they're feeling. Oh yes. It's going to be great. You got, we're like, we're, we're in the good seats where it's like when you, when you first walk in, 
there's that front row. I wish we were like two or three rows back, but considering this theater and considering the tickets, we're lucky that we come right in, we sit front and center in the in that that back row there, you know. Ooh. Not the front, not front, front and center. That yeah. that row when you walk in, that first row there, front and center. It's gonna be great. Oh, we're gonna be close enough to reach out and touch those rings. Mandarin's gonna be slapping us around. Oh man, yeah, we're gonna feel the wind of those kicks. Just <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. I can't wait. All right, everybody. Next time you hear from us, we will have seen Shang Chi: The Legend of the Ten Rings, and we'll have our episode about it. The first one we'll ever be recording together since COVID. Uh, we'll have that up and ready for it. It's going to be so exciting. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, Mr. Ryan. I look forward to seeing you, buddy. It's going to be great. It's going to be, dare I say, a marvelous day. <laughs>